بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد النبي وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وآل بيته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فا ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. Dear brothers and sisters, today إن شاء الله we start talking about the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم after we had we had given an introduction in the past three khutbah about the sources from which this information is obtained. And as you will see, it will basically be the the khutbah when we talk about the seerah will be narrations, different narrations that you compile together to get an idea about anything that relates to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, we will start chronologically. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on a Monday and, and uh, on the month of Rabi'a, in the month of Rabi'a al-Awwal and in the year that is called Aam al-Fil. And this is the same year where Abraha came to Kaaba wanted, wanting to demolish it. Al-Fil means the elephant, bringing the elephants to demolish the Kaaba. <clears throat> Monday, Rabi al Awal, Am al Fil, this is consensus between scholars. Most scholars have concluded that it was the 12th of Rabi al Awal, Prophet Sallallahu was born. And this is, this coincides with the 20th of April, 571, according to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, the father of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his name was Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abd Manaf. And his mother, Amina bin Tawahb ibn Abd Manaf. This, these are their names. And one of the Sahaba, his name is Qais ibn Makhrama, he says, Myself and the Prophet, وسلم, we were born on the year of the elephant. Also, Ibn Abbas narrates and he says that the Prophet وسلم, was born on a Monday. And he died also on a Monday. And he left Mecca, immigrating to Medina on a Monday. And he reached Medina on a Monday as well, because it took him like a week to get there. And it was on a Monday that he lifted Al-Hajr Al-Aswad, as they were building, were building the Kaaba before he became a prophet, and they asked him to put the cornerstone, the, the black stone. That was on a Monday as well. And also Ibn Abbas says that the Isra, the Mi'raj, the ascension to the heavens was also on, on a Monday. And there are narrations, and we have the references for all these for the, the, this, these pieces of information. Also, Prophet Sallallahu one time was asked by a Bedouin. This hadith is narrated by Abu Qatad al-Ansari. It is in a, a Sahih Muslim. Prophet Sallallahu was asked about the Monday and he says, this is a day I was born and this is a day I was sent with the mission. I, the first time he received the revelation from Allah was also on, was also on a Monday. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu had the habit of trying to fast Mondays. Also, Prophet Sallallahu he says about himself that Allah chose Kinana, his, uh, one of his ancestors. He chose Kinana from the sons of Ismail. And he chose Quraysh. Quraysh is the grandson from Kinana. His name is Fir. And his nickname was Quraysh. And he chose this man, Fir, or the nickname Quraysh, from the, the children of Kinana. And he chose, chose Hashim from the descendants of Quraysh. And he chose me from the descendants of Hashim. Also, it is narrated in the book of Tabarani, Mu'jum al-Tabarani. And this is an acceptable uh, hadith. It is authentic, Hassan al-Albani. He says that I was, the pro uh, 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 I was the product of lawful marriage. And I was never a product product of wedlock. From the time of Adam alayhi salam till the time my my parents, uh, my, my mother gave birth to me, or my parents had me. So this was a miracle for the Prophet sallallahu that Allah protected his lineage and never in any of his ancestors, there was somebody who came out of wedlock, subhanAllah. And also one time, Prophet sallallahu ascended the member 
And he said, he asked the people, who am I? They said to him, you are the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he said to them, I am Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib. He says, Allah created the creation and he made me in the best of his creation, which means humanity. Because humanity is the chosen creation of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ Allah chose humanity to be the number one creation on this earth. He says, Allah created his creation and made me amongst the best of his creation. And then Allah divided his creation into two kinds. Of course, human beings are not all good. There's good and evil amongst human beings. He says, and he made me amongst the best of the two, two, uh, two kinds of human beings, the good. And then Allah created tribes, and he made me amongst the best of tribes. And Allah then created families, and he, he made me, or he brought me out of the best of, uh, of, the, of families. He says, so I am the best of you, when it comes to family, I am, and I'm the best of you when it comes to my soul. Also, it is mentioned, and this is an authentic hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, that Hiraql, his, uh, Hiraql was, uh, was the Byzantine uh, king, the Roman king. He heard that Abu Sufyan, and he was a leader in Quraysh, and at the time, Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim. He was going to trade in that area, in the area of Syria. And when Hiraql heard that there are some Arabs in the area, he basically summoned them because he wanted to ask him about this man whom he has heard information about coming from Arabia. And then he sat Abu Sufyan, because basically he was the leader of that group. He made him sit in front of him and he brought the interpreter. And then he had his friends, his party, the people who were with Abu Sufyan sit behind him so that Abu Sufyan cannot see, the, see them. At the same time, he told them, I will ask your friend or your leader questions. If he, and if he tells me the truth, I want, you to, I want you guys to acknowledge and approve and confirm, meaning by nodding or showing him that they approve of what he said. And if he says a lie, I want you also to tell me or show me that he is lying. And then, he asked him many questions and it's a very important long hadith that we have to one time try to study together because Hiraql was not only a king but he was very knowledgeable in Christianity. He was uh, one of the Christian scholars and he had lots of information about the coming of a new prophet and his sifat, his attributes and his qualities. So he basically asked him about those qualities. His questions were all very important. One of those questions he said to him, how is his lineage amongst you in your tribe? And Abu, and Abu Sufyan replied that yes, he has one of the best lineage or the, one of the, he's one of, from one of the best families. And then Hiraql replied, he says, also the prophets, indeed the prophets are sent amongst the best of families. Now, Prophet Sallallahu says that he has more than one name. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. He says, I am Muhammad and I'm also Ahmed. وأنا الماحي. Mahi means the one who wipes out. He says, Allah will wipe out kufr. Rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by me. وأنا الحاشر. الذي يحشر الناس على قدمي. He says, and basically I'm the last prophet. After my coming, then the next big event, the huge event will be the day of judgment. And he says, وأنا العاقب. Aqib also means that there's no prophet after him. But the word hashir means that al-hashr comes after him. That, the, that between him and Yawm al-Qiyamah, there's nobody. But al-Aqib entails more that just talks about that there's no other prophet after him. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was breastfed by Halima al sadiya as we all know. But he was also breastfed by a woman, her name was Tuwayba al aslamiyah She was basically one of the slaves of Abu Lahab, his uncle. This lady Thuwayba, she breastfed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his uncle Hamza, and also she breastfed Abu Salama. So these three were basically brothers through breastfeeding, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, uh, and Hamza and Abu Salama. We will talk inshallah about Halima Saadiyah in the coming khutbah and also about Umm Ayman who was the lady who took care of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, throughout his childhood. Umm Ayman, her story is very amazing because this lady 
with a person I didn't know much about her myself. We don't talk about this lady much, although this lady was with the Prophet ﷺ before, yani he, she was with him, with his mother before he was born. She was with him from the time he was born till his death وسلم, And she lived until the Khilafah of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. She lived a long life. And this lady basically brought him up. So we have to know more about this lady. Halima Sa'diyya, her involvement with the Prophet وسلم, was only when she was nursing him, breastfeeding him. But Umm Ayman was there for such a long time with the Prophet وسلم. Suwayba al aslamiyah there's a hadith I will finish the khutbah with. It is in Sahih al-Bukhari, an authentic book of Bukhari, that the wife of the Prophet وسلم, her name is Ummu Habiba, and Ummu Habiba is actually the daughter of Abu Sufyan. The more we learn and read about the, the, the seer of the Prophet وسلم, we come to know all these people. Abu Sufyan, we just came, we talked about him. Now, his daughter, of course, he then became a Muslim, and he had a, uh, he had a son called Ikrimah. He became a shaheed in the Battle of Yarmouk. He has a daughter, Umm Habiba, who became the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu And Umm Habiba, one time, said to the Prophet Sallallahu I want you... Actually, she first asked him, he says, what is your opinion about my sister? And he said to her, he said to her, what about your sister? She said to him, would you want to yeah. ma marry my sister? Would you like to marry my sister? And she actually said to him, why don't you marry my sister? He says, and the Prophet was surprised about her yani, offer. He says, would you want something like this? Is this something that would please you for me to marry your sister? And then the Umm Habib, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, said to him, the re she gave him her reasoning. She said, I know that I will never be your only wife. Because of course, she had, he had wives before her and he may have wives after. And he said, and if you're going to marry anybody, then the one I would want the most to share this goodness with me would be my sister. She didn't tell him the whole story right now because later you'll see. So Prophet Sallallahu replied to her. She said to him, she, he said to her, no, this is not lawful for me to marry your sister. And as you see, Prophet Sallallahu yani, and this hadith shows it all, shows that Prophet Sallallahu yani, would never disobey Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in anything. People try to say that all he, all he wanted is just to marry women and have lots of women. Actually, exact opposite. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricted things for him and we will see that. And many times women were offered to him for marriage and he would decline. I just mentioned to you actually Hamza that he was his brother from breastfeeding. There's an authentic hadith that one time somebody offered him the daughter of Hamza. And she is his cousin and he can marry her because she's his cousin. But he refused because him and Hamza were brothers through breastfeeding. Now another example here. She is offering him to marry his sister, her sister. And he says, no, it's unlawful for me. And then she says to him, now I think this is basically what motivated her to say that. They said, well, we hear that you plan to marry the daughter of uh, Abu Salama. Daughter of Abu Salama. And then he says, are you talking about the daughter of Abu Salama from Umm Salama? She said, yes. He said, he explained to her, he says, she is unlawful for me for two reasons. One of them is that the daughter of Umm Salama, Umm Salama, also the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu He says, this is the daughter that I raised and I'm married to her mother. And of course, if you marry a woman, her daughters immediately become like your daughters. They become permanently prohibited for you to marry. So she says, she's like my daughter. I'm, I'm married to her mother. For that reason, she's forbidden. And there's another reason as well, because she's the daughter of Abu Salama. And we just mentioned earlier that Abu Salama was breastfed by Thuwayba. Him, Hamza, and the Prophet ﷺ were breastfed by the same woman, Thuwayba. So she's basically the daughter of his brother. He's like an uncle to her as well. So he's like an uncle to her, and he's, he's like an uncle, and he's also like a father. You follow that? So he said to her, she, from two re for two reasons, she's not lawful to me. And of course, it was a rumor. Even Prophet ﷺ, there were rumors com coming out uh, about him, that he plans to marry. How can somebody bring out a rumor like this, that he, wa wa that he plans to marry the daughter that he has raised from the woman that he is married to? SubhanAllah. So Prophet ﷺ obviously did not like this whole conversation. He says, stop offering, offering, you, offering me your sisters and your daughters. 
which indicates that people always wanted to offer him their sisters or their daughters for marriage, but he was the one who was always resisting and declining. And he only accepted those marriages in which he felt there was some goodness that is going to happen to that woman or to Islam or to, its, to, its, to her tribe. This is usually how he made those kind of decisions. And we have other hadith in the Sunnah in which Prophet ﷺ declined other marriages. So this is a good response to those people who say that Prophet ﷺ all he wanted was to marry. And even in the Quran, Allah said to him after he had his wives, he says, لا يحل لك النساء من بعد ولا أن تبدل بهن من أزواج ولو أعجبك حسنهن إلا ما ملكت يمينه. Look at this. Allah says, now that you have those wives, you cannot marry anymore. And you cannot divorce, it's not about a matter of numbers. You cannot divorce and marry a different woman. While any other regular Muslim has the right to divorce and marry some other woman, correct? But for the Prophet ﷺ, it became restricted. Those are your wives in this dunya. You have no right to marry on top of them. And you have no right to divorce any one of them and marry someone else. He says, إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ يَمِينُ But then Allah opened the right hand possession for him. But still, Prophet Sallallahu throughout his life, he only had one woman who was right hand possession. And she was granted to him from, by, from a king from Egypt, Al-Muqawqis. We'll stop here, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَمِنَّا سَأَلُكَ بِأَسْمَاءِكَ الْحُسْنَةِ وَبِصْفَاتِكَ الْأُولَى وَبِسْمِكَ الْأَعْضَمْ الَّذِي بِإِلَى الْعَيْتِ بِهِ أَجَبْتَ وَإِذَا سَأَلْ سُئِلْتَ بِهِ عَطِيْتَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ يَا أَكْرَمَ الْأَكْرَمِينَ يَا أَجْوَدَ الْأَجْوَدِينَ أَسْأَلُكَ لِوَالِدِينَ وَلِأَنفُسِنَا وَلِأَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا وَأَهْلِينَا وَلِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ الْحَيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ اللَّهُمَّ لَا تَدْعُ لَنَا فِي هَذَا الْيَوْمِ الْعَظِيمِ الْمُبَارَكِ ذَنْبًا إِلَّا غَفَرْتَهُ وَلَا مَيْتًا إِلَّا رَحِمْتَهُ وَلَا مُبْتَلًا إِلَّا عَافَيْتَهُ وَلَا ضَالًّا إِلَّا هَدَيْتَهُ وَلَا وَلَدًا إِلَّا أَصْلَحْتَهُ وَلَا مَرِيضًا إِلَّا شَفَيْتَهُ وَلَا مَحْزُونًا إِلَّا فَرَّحْتَهُ وَلَا فَقِيرًا إِلَّا أَغْنَيْتَهُ وَلَا أَسِيرًا إِلَّا فَكَكْتَهُ وَلَا خَائِفًا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ إِلَّا أَمَنْتَهُ وَلَا مَظْلُومًا إِلَّا نَصَرْتَهُ ولا عدوا الا قصمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح الا قضيتها واسرتها رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. ان شاء الله الصلاة تايمز ار هير. بليز لوك ات ذيم بيفور يو ليف. يو كان تيك ا بيكشر. اتس ايزي واي. يو تيك ا بيكشر اوف ذيس بيفور يو ليف. اولسو بليز دونت فورجيت دونيشنز فور ذا قران كلاسز اند فور ذا بيلدينج ذا مسجد ان ذا باك ذير. اند يو كان دونيت يوزنج ذا ماشين از ويل. وات فود. There's also food. There's also food uh, in, the, uh, in the back. Whoever wants to take from that food, it's for anybody. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ayyala salam. Ayyala al-falah.